This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to You Are What You Love, your window into the future of spirituality. We're going to talk to you about your life and the evolution of your soul while we bring alive the essence of eternal truth. So here is your host, the author of You Are What You Love, Waishali. Welcome to another exciting episode of You Are What You Love. I'm your hostess, Waishali. And we have, we're joined by my co-host, Mr. Cameron Steele. Hey, Cam. Hello, hello, everybody. Hope they can all hear me because I'm talking really loud. <laughs> oh, that's right. We've been having past problems in the past, haven't we, where people have posted in the chat room, can't hear you, Cam. You can't hear you, Cam. Speak up, speak up. Well, I'm, I'm sure they can hear me now because it looks like my levels are going way up there. Oh, good. Well, I so, can tell in you. In the chat room, we, Rico Suave is in the chat room. He can tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Rico, fill us in. Um, give us a sound check approval. Yes, um, indeed. So, um, Cam, as you know, our guest today is the lovely and talented Mr. Chuck Bergman. Love Chuck. Always love Chuck. I think I'm in love with Chuck. I think everybody is. Yeah. To know Chuck is to love Chuck. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, I want to encourage people to visit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that was Miss Galaxy walking over the keyboard. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just thought for sure she'd, you know, just 86 me from the show. But the, <laughs> my kitty producer is under control now. There you go. You um, see? Perfect. Yeah. Um, you know how cats are when they want attention. Um, uh, oh, I want to encourage people to visit Chuck's website. It's chuckbergman.com. Spelled exactly as you would imagine it, C H U C K Bergman, B E R G M A N. He's got a very easy to maneuver, clear cut website. I love it. You can get a sample of his work. You can, you know, hear him uh, do some of his readings to see if it resonates with you. And you can book a session right there. It's one of the most easiest to maneuver websites I've ever seen. And uh, so without further delay, uh, Chuck, welcome back to You Are What You Love, hun. Well, thank you very much, and it's been a fast two weeks. I was really looking forward to another show today. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. And hi, I, Cameron. Hi. I was going to say it was uh, <laughs> this is your second appearance in 2021. That's true. More the more the better. You're right, right. <laughs> and I want to let our listening audience know that the lines are open. The show is live, and if you would like to call in at eight four four three ninety. 8255. Okay, Miss Galaxy. Um, uh, that's 844-390-8255. If you'd like to call in and ch- call call in and talk with talk with Chuck, man, I don't know what happened to my articulation. <laughs> if you would like to call in and talk to Chuck, you are welcome to 844-390-8255. And Cam, the li- the lines are open, right? They are open, ready for you to call in and say hello and talk with Chuck, talk with Wishali, and talk with yours truly. And, yeah, you uh, get a for We are all here. We're all here for you. That's what we do this show for, right? For them. That's, that's exactly what we do the show for. And it looks like you got the seal of approval from the Rico Suave sound test. I saw that, yes. I'm going to make him my my official uh, sound checker. Well, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. The big, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. And, uh, Chuck, why don't you fill, fill us in in the whole two weeks since we last talked to you? Anything new and interesting going on in your world or any new interesting, like, readings or anything like that? I've had some very interesting readings, but as far as my own personal life, uh, I think I left the house twice only in the two weeks. Getting a little bit uh, cramped up here, you know, staying in the same place all the time. Is but, it just you haven't had to go out? No, nah, I really haven't had to, and it's just better not to at this point. Why? And there's no one out there anyway. You know, the streets are empty. Yeah. Yeah, um, Florida is a lot more uh, open than most other states, so it's nice to be able to 
go out and, you know, go to the store and uh, not feel like you're in communist China. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. You mentioned going into the store. So yesterday I had a strange thing happen. I mean, this is just bizarre. This is out of the world of bizarro world, okay? So I'm walking through the store at the back of the store trying to get a couple things. And I see in front of me there's like four or five people gathered in a little circle talking. And they're all product people. They're all people that work at this at the QFC or their, or their suppliers. They're kind of holding papers, talking and stuff, you know. I'm not thinking much of it. I'd never think of anything, you know, other than, oh, they're, I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to paw my way through that little group there. And this lady comes walking towards me. And, of course, we're all wearing masks because you have to. And this lady comes walking towards me, and she looks at me, and I look at her, and I said, hello. And, and she says, you know, uh, she says, well, she says, what do you think about all that over there? And I said, oh, what, over where? And she said, those four or five people all gather talking. They're not standing six feet apart. They're not social distancing. They've, got, they've all got masks on. I said, I don't think anything of it. I think it's okay. And then she says, oh, okay. And then she carries on her merry way. I feel like she just wanted to start a bitch session. <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> waiting, waiting, for... waiting for me to say, well, I don't like it at all, and I think that somebody should do something and blah, blah, blah. But I kind of I kind of <laughs> poked a hole in this balloon. Sorry. Yeah, you know. Yeah, she she wanted to do a litmus test on how rational you were, and right. you didn't. You weren't unhinged enough for her to engage with. Right, right. Yeah, it's like I, I think it's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you should have moved very close to her when you said well, it was okay. But the bizarre thing was she was standing less than two feet away from me when she started talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Like what? <laughs> it's like that lady. <laughs> It's like that lady a few months ago, or that guy a few months ago, when I was sitting in my car without my mask on, he comes yelling over at me, telling me to put a mask on, and he's yelling at me uh, to put a mask on when he is not even wearing a mask outside my car. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I said, all right, Kevin, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, is that the male version of That's Karen? That's the male version of Karen, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, Kevin. It's like when I... Actually, uh, the funny story is, uh, so I was I went to this store to get a to to um, uh, get something, uh, uh, get a screw for the roof rack, okay. And so, because um, the screw, I the, the screw came out, and I thought, well, maybe the roof rack store will have one. So I, I walk in. There's a guy standing outside the store on his phone. I walk into the store uh, because they're you know they're they're doing their thing, and this guy or uh, like on the other side of the store, he says, oh, uh, you know, you shouldn't be in here. He said, that, that guy out there is waiting. And I went, oh, that's fine. I'm not buying anything right now. I'm just looking. And he's, well, you, should, you, still, you still should let that other guy in first. And I'm like, whatever. Okay, fine. So then the guy at the counter says, can I help you? And I said, well, and then the other guy said, hey, wait a second. That other guy outside is first. And I said, listen there, Karen. I said, I already talked to him. He's fine. He's on his phone. He is not coming in the store. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so it's like, just mind your business. And I did call Are him Are they Karen. letting one at a time in at the store? At that time, I didn't know it was Kevin, but I called him Karen. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get it. It went over his head. Yeah, well, he came out afterwards. Afterwards, I was walking. He left the store before I did. And I was, I was walking out the store. He says, excuse me, excuse me. I said, I got nothing, buddy. I said, I'm sorry. I, I just, I don't have, I don't have the time or day. For anybody who has to involve their self in my business and wants to criticize whatever whatever is going on there. He said, no, no, I, I just want to apologize. I said, the best way you can apologize, sir, is by minding your own business. I said, have a great day. Oh, what did he say? <laughs> he, he didn't say anything. He walked away. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't impolite to him. I was just, you know what, you can apologize by not involving yourself in other people's business right know, let them be right. you know you wouldn't have to apologize if you just didn't need to solve everybody else's problem i'm right. sure if right. you focused on your own life there'd be plenty to clean up yeah there. yeah yeah i hear you it's just so much more exciting to clean up other people's because then you can ignore your own well right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've got family members that have made a career out of it. <laughs> but I'm sure we all do. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, anyway, and, so, yeah. 
Um, you know, uh, sometimes the best way for people to understand what it is that Chuck does is to just, you know, have Chuck do his thing. And I know, uh, Cam, last time Chuck was on the show, you guys started to talk, but it wasn't, we didn't really have the space to do it justice. And since we're at the beginning of the show and we've got all the time in the world and live radio, <laughs> um, uh, maybe it might be a good time to uh, pick up where we left off. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Chuck, what do you think? I'm ready if you are. Okay. So uh, so the backstory for people that just might have joined us didn't know about what happened. Uh, December 30th, my mom passed away and um, in Canada. Uh, now, she started getting sick in July. She was misdiagnosed uh, half a dozen times. They sent her to six different hospitals. At the end of the day, she died of vasculitis, which is a very rare thing to happen. In fact, the whole vasculitis society is actually located in Alberta. They don't even have a vasculitis uh, office in, in the States. But anyways, regardless of that, uh, she died of uh, vasculitis, and she did have sepsis, and um, you know, she on, uh, so I had, I had an opportunity to go visit her without getting, uh, quarantined because of this whole compassion thing of crossing the border stuff. That was easy. I got, uh, got that done on Saturday, December 26th. Uh, was it December 26th? Yes, I think it was. They had called me up. The doctors in the morning, Saturday morning called me up and said, Hey, you better get up here. She's not going to make it past the day. No, she said past the day. Okay. I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll I'll head up there right now, and I'll I'll see if I can get across the border. And I got there. Everything was fine. I managed to get into the hospital and, you know, um, did some video calls with some friends and family that, you know, and that, and that kind of thing. And, and Saturday night, I told her, I said, you're not going to see me again. I said, I, I got to get back to the States. But, uh, you know, you won't see me again. So I grabbed her cheeks, kissed her forehead, and then she said, can I go to sleep now? And I said, yeah, you can go to sleep. Now, this was all with the understanding that she wasn't, she was just asking to go to sleep. I was in the, I was saying, you're not going to see me again because I knew she wasn't going to, she wasn't going to make it. And the whole thing about, uh, we were supposed to, we were going to try and get her over to, uh, get her back to her house with her hospital bed so she could just pass away at home under hospice care. And it turned out they couldn't do that. And uh, because she had a she had vasculitis on her back that had formed uh, over the over the past day or two, and uh, if they said that if they moved her, it would it would kill her right away because her part of her spine was showing through the lesion. So uh, they had found that on Saturday, and so uh, uh, Saturday while I was there, they did a COVID nineteen test uh, because somebody apparently was tested positive, so they had to test every all the patients. And Saturday, um, Sunday morning, the, they called me and said, yeah, your, your uh, mother tested positive for COVID-19, so we're, we're, we're moving her to the COVID-19 ward, which is a different floor. And two days later, of course, she passed away. Now, they said that she died of COVID-19, but we all know that it was vasculitis, and, and that's, that's what it was. Uh, because Saturday morning before she even had been tested positive for COVID, and even Thursday or Wednesday, they said she wasn't going to make it past the week. So this was before they even knew anybody on the floor had COVID. So COVID was not the cause, just making that clear. And um, <clears throat> anyway, she passed away, and, and so I'm, uh, you know, I was the only one besides my daughter, Tia, who was able to see her, like physically, and of course my stepdad, Jim, uh, was able to see her, and, uh, you know, I had told her that, you know, on Saturday afternoon, I felt bad because Saturday afternoon, I talked to the doctors about bringing her home, and they said, you know, we'll keep her off the ventilator and take her to find antibiotics because she's not going to make it. I said, yeah, just, I said, this is no way to live. I said, so, uh, I said, but I'd like to get her home, you know, and he said, yeah, we can do that. Now, this was before they found the lesion on her back, of course, and, uh, and, um, and so I walked into the hotel or into the hotel room, into the hospital room, and I said, uh, told my mom, I said, "Hey, mom, you're going home." And her face just lit up, and I mean, she was just so like, "Oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you." And then, of course, the whole thing happened where she couldn't go home, and because she had the lesion on her back, they, she couldn't they couldn't move her, so they had to keep her there in, in the same bed. And then she passed away on uh, three days later. On the, well, she actually passed away December 
uh, December 30th. She passed away. So, yeah. So I just wondered if, Chuck, if you've got anything that you can pass along to me that she's either maybe she's still in transition or where she's where she's at. I had a dream about her a couple of nights ago, but, you know, um, seems like everybody's struggling with her quite a struggling with this quite a bit because, you know, they weren't able to see her and the misdiagnosis and stuff like that. And, you know, they, we talked about doing something about the misdiagnosis, but it's not, there's nothing we can do about it. It is what it is. And, and so, you know, but she passed away while she was sleeping. So we feel like, you know, she was, she's okay. I just got a quick view, only a quick one, and it might be something you would remember. Um, and I don't recall if you said she wasn't eating, but I see her pushing a tray of food away. Oh, Scott, really you're, the- you're right, you're right, you're right. She she was having a hard time eating because she couldn't, the muscles in her throat couldn't, and she was eating, she always, for the past six months, she was eating like a bird. We kept telling her that she's got to oh. eat and eat, but she kept pushing it away and not wanting to eat too much, and then... Uh, and then when it came down to the last week before she died, uh, you know, she said, okay, I'll eat, I'll eat. And I said, okay, but she couldn't eat anymore because the muscles couldn't get the food down to her stomach. Oh. It, it would always, it would end up in her lung area. Oh, yeah. not good. Worst thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what else she'll give. She's, um, I do have her, but rather time. slow, you know, which I would expect. And it is, you know, pretty recent and. It takes a little while to kind of transition to that new form. Uh, how does uh, with Shally put it? Your your body upgrade and all that has to take place. So yeah. that can take a little while. Um, let me just see. Uh, I don't know if this is my own uh, thought or her, or if it is coming from your mom. But when you were saying uh, go home, yeah, I got to tell you, it felt like she thought you meant to the other side it was time to leave oh really yeah i don't I I, that I, twice I, when you were talking from her because huh. i was trying to link in while you were speaking to her oh and, and i think it was a bit of a disappointment when she realized you meant physically taking her back oh whoa well i don't know because she said when i told her going home she says oh i get to see casey which is her dog and jim at home i said yeah you know, so, that sounds like she was looking forward to, to that, and she did understand. But to me, she was making me feel like she was really looking forward to going to where she is right now. Yeah, and that would make so. sense because at the end of the day on Saturday, I told her, I said, you're not going to see me again. I said, this is it. You're not going to see me again. I have to I have to leave. I can't stay here anymore. I got to go. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, then can I go to sleep now? And I said, yes, you can go to sleep now. And so that might be where she where she was like, okay, now now I am gonna I am gonna go to the other home because she asked me if she could go to sleep. I said yes, you can go to sleep. All right, is there a uh, June birthday? Uh, June, a June birthday. Um, let me see. My brothers are nope, um, uh, nope, nope, no June birthdays as far as I can think of off the top of my head. Okay, I'll let it go. You know how this works. Sometimes later yeah. you remember. And, yeah. But I'm definitely getting June. I'm not interested in any other month, the way it feels. Right. So. Yeah. Here, here's something strange, too. I feel like she's got no no muscle tone in her hands and her fingers. Huh. Well, well feels- she, yeah, she had a hard time before she died. Lift. She couldn't even lift anything up. I mean. She had her phone with her, but she was using her phone once in a while. But, you know, a few days before she died, she didn't have the strength to, li- to lift up her phone. I, and I had oh. to feed her a few times. I had to feed her on Saturday when I was there. I had to give her food and stuff like that and help her eat. And, you know, and we did when we did FaceTime, you know, she wanted to put her lipstick on and, and her rouge and <laughs> uh, uh, to do FaceTime. Uh, I mean, she was a big, big, she was huge on the lipstick. I mean. I, I said to the, the the cremator, I said we got to put a tube of lipstick in there with her with her thing because, <laughs> you know, she she was only allowed to have lipstick in the hospital, and she would take a little bit of the lipstick and she put it on her cheeks to make her cheeks a little bit rosy red so we could do the video. <laughs> <laughs> Old school. 
Yep, yep. Yep. That is old. I don't know what to make of this. She just took her thumb and put a cross on your forehead. Huh. At first, it felt like maybe she was giving you a kiss. Yeah. Or is it the other way around? Did you do that to her forehead? No, I gave her a kiss on the forehead. I took my mask off and gave her a big smooch on the forehead. That could be because to make me see that, I could see her doing it um, with with a finger or a thumb, you know, like a cross or an X. Uh, well, but it was definitely forehead that was getting my attention. Well, you know, it's interesting because she was the reason I got into metaphysics in the first place. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I would see people's auras, and I would always ask mom, oh, wow. what the yeah. uh, what the color." And and funny enough, uh, she was she was contemplating after I was born becoming a nun. Oh, did she did she see auras too? No, but she had she had pretty she she, she was you know she was kind of in, I mean she was reading um, oh God I can't remember the name of the book now the one of the oldest metaphysician books around. Um, Oh, uh, the book on 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 the on the stone. What's it called? Oh, on the stone. Oh, what's the guy's name? On top of the hill. Uh, oh God. Eckhart Tolle. No, no, no. This is going way back. This is going back to the. Oh, I wish my phone was was on so I could text the text of India. Oh, what's it? What's the name of the guy? Oh, I, I got the book behind me, but I can't get to it. Um, Indian guy. What's it called? An Indian guy? No, no, no. This is a guy. The Sermon on the Mound. Who wrote oh, okay. that book? Who wrote that book? Uh, I don't know. I know Jesus gave it, but I don't know who wrote the book. <laughs> uh, let me see. Sermon. Oh. Uh, oh, God. Who is the guy's name? Uh, maybe it wasn't the Sermon on the Mound, but... Oh. Anyway, she was reading this. This this is one of the first metaphysicians around. Uh, what's the guy's, Wayne Dyer? guy's name called? What's it? What's the guy's name called? Emmett Fox. Divindia is here with me. Oh, my phone's Emmett, dead. Okay. I couldn't. Oh, <laughs> my phone's dead. Emmett Fox. She was not reading. Not Matthew Fox. Hey, okay? but em, not Matthew Fox. No, Emmett Fox. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's the name of it? Oh, yeah, it's Emmett Fox, Sermon on the Mount. She wanted to be a nun. Uh, Janet, oh, Janet's birthday. My Auntie Janet is in June. Sit down. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> is that her oh, sister? Okay. Yeah, that's her sister. I knew there was something there, and I shouldn't yeah. give me any, you know, my, my dancing around it with her. Right. Okay, Facebook, yeah. Um She's going to go on Facebook so I can chat with her on Messenger. If she comes, she's, she's listening to the show as well. So yeah, Emmett Fox, she wanted to become a nun, and uh, I guess when she had me, of course, all that went to went to the the bucket. And so, um, but Auntie Janet's birthday, her sister, uh, your mom Catholic. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I guess so, right? <laughs> Well, I was going to say that's usually if you're going to become a nun, it's usually, I mean, they have Buddhist nuns, but I, uh, in Christianity, it's normally Catholics. Yeah. Yeah. No, she was, she was Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, so she wanted to become a nun, but she had me and then there was, then there was a lot of struggle. She started off as Catholic, you know. Right. So, um, but then when she had me, of course, all that went to into becoming a parent. She worked. For, she worked for a bishop. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Divindi is telling me all this stuff because I don't remember half of it. <laughs> so, what, was she disillusioned by all the pedophilia stuff? I don't know. I don't know what. Uh, I I'm not sure what happened. How they? How it? Turned out she left there, but, uh, you know, she met my dad, and they were married for, you know, four years, six years, something like that, and then uh, they got divorced, and then she raised me on her own, you know, and, uh, but, yeah, so she did want to, she worked for the Bishop of the Catholic Church in Winnipeg. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm sure she had an interesting life review looking at what that was all about. Right. What, yeah. 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 So and that may it, be why she did that whole cross thing on my forehead. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't think of it that way, but it may have been. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Chuck, you know, one of the tragedies of what's going on is that so many people have to die by themselves. Oh, so they, they, uh, one thing, uh, Devinda is saying is the Bishop retired and they brought in a new administration. And so that's why she left. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that that's one of the frustrating things for families is that they're not allowed in. And, um, you know, as you know, nobody actually ever really dies alone because there's so many people from the spiritual community that are around us at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just was wondering if she, you know, if there were some family members that were with her, if she could share, um, who was with her just so that the rest of the family could let go of this notion of her just being by herself and being alone. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Um, it, it was there a family member that was there with her that was comforting her from the other side. I'm sure there were, I'd like to see what she says. It's going to be kind of hard to see if I can get a name or get a description or, or even a yes or no with that statement from her. So I'm, I'm going to tap into that, but first Cameron, I'm feeling there was a funny, um, a, like a, some kind of a war over your name when you were named Cameron. Oh, there. my God, Chuck. <laughs> Shut the front door. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm yep, telling you. that telling me all about it the whole time you were talking. You were you were bang on. Uh, I wish Devindia would call in because she knows more than I do about my own story. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I was not born Cameron, and there was a big fight over, over, over me uh, versus uh, her, her, my biological dad, uh, dad's mother. Uh, I was being pulled in different directions. My actual name was Tyrone, Tyrone Kingston Cameron Duff. Oh my! Yes, uh, Tyrone. And now, so a little on a side note. Um, I, if I remember, they were only married for like a year and then, you know, he, he went off with someone else and he named other kids, Cameron, who I know now to the, who I know now, by the way, uh, and, uh, Tyrone, uh, he named somebody else Tyrone. And anyways, um, when my dad, my, my dad that I have, that I call my dad married my mom, they changed my name to Cameron George. Because George is part of uh, my dad's family, I guess, and Steel and Cameron is, you know, Cameron. So, yeah. But yeah, there was a big fight over my over big fight over me, and and the, the yeah, my name was originally uh, Tyrone Kingston Cameron Duffin. <laughs> I love and it. So, uh, uh, her parents and her grandparents and Terry might have been there. Terry is. So my aunt Janet also lost her husband last year. And six months later, oh. then lost her sister. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, her parents and my Nana and, and my Banka and Mamie and stuff were all, you know, uh, apparently they were there in the room with her. Divindia had tuned into that and said, oh, look at all the people that are waiting for her. Well, I finally got the answer that you were asking, Rochelle, about, you know, who who met her. I don't know who this person is. But she's saying she didn't go over to the other side, the normal style. And it's a little bit of a story with her, but she's talking about going down to the docks on a rainy day. And someone met her in a boat at the docks. And that way, she said she, they took her to the boat. And while everyone was on shore, she had all that time to wave and yell. And here I come, here I come as I'm getting closer. Any idea why she's choosing that kind of a metaphor that she she couldn't just do it the normal way? It had to be a big fanfare and huh? recognized by everyone. But I feel like there's a boat involvement, either someone in the family with a boat. Especially uh, 
Not that I can think of. I mean, Divindia can pipe in here if she wants. I, I don't know. I mean, she loved the water. I mean, I know that. And she did enjoy riding the ferries when they did ride the ferry. But, I mean, nobody she was never. And she lived by water. I mean, she was right right on a river, river lake, a lake river sort of thing. She, she's saying she got what she wanted out of that. And it kind of like on the ferry when you're doing that kind of a ferry ride where you're. Your mission is to really enjoy the ride, not really the transportation part as much as enjoying the the boat ride. Yeah. And for her, it was like by appearing that way in front of everyone, it let her be the queen. It let her be the one that everyone had to focus on. And that's what she wanted, and that's what she got. Huh. I never thought of her being the fanfare type. She was really not a fanfare type. A person. She wanted it. She's telling me she really wanted it this time just to say, you know, huh. I'm doing it. I'm coming over and I'm rejoining everyone. And it's 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 time for her to she didn't just want to walk over and blend in. She wanted it to be memorable. Wow. Wow. Maybe she was tired of being alone all that time, you know, in the hospital. Yeah. yeah. But it was odd that I even saw like a misty day at the dock. It didn't even seem like a good day to go on a boat. And I kept asking her, well, who's driving the boat? Whose boat is it? And I couldn't get an answer, but it was more about her waving to everyone and seeing everyone on the shoreline. And it looks like there were plenty. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I can't get a description, can't get a name. Uh Email me later if you come up with why the boat, you know, yeah, scenario I, would pop up. I don't know. I'm not sure of that one at all. I know that when at uh, one time we had a boat, she loved going on the boat, but it wasn't anything big. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah, I don't either. I don't know why she would do that, but that's exactly what she was showing. So, huh. um, but she would, she's not giving me names, and I've been trying. Earlier, I could have sworn I heard the word Mary coming in. Mary? Well, that would be her. Uh, that would be, um, well, she had a friend named Mary, but she's still alive. And Mary is, uh, uh, Mary is a sister-in-law, I think, or uh, something like that. But I think, but they don't get along at all. They, they had a big family falling out a long time ago. Uh, but I'm not sure who Mary, Mary, other than Mary, her friend Mary is. Her men, friend Mary has uh, been a lifelong friend, but she's still alive. And she got to talk to uh, Mom that day I was there. So, M- oh, Mamie, maybe? Would it be Mamie? It's very possible. Names really do sound like they're underwater. Well, Mamie really- is my great-grandmother, grand- which would be her grandmother. And uh, that would be, I would say Mamie, but nothing to do with boats or water, for sure. But Mamie is for sure a, a name that uh, would marry, you know, Mamie is what I called my great-grandmother. Uh, is okay, she, like any... a, it was like a big bon voyage, a big send-off. With her? Yeah, that she, you know, felt like she had all these family members around her. And it was, a, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't think so because I, okay. the whole send off in the in our family was never really a big deal. Okay. She what? Oh, she always wanted more than what she said. So maybe you're right, Chuck. All right, I, you know, again, I can only, I I know when they're giving me the uh, the vision, and I know when I'm making one up or thinking of it myself. Mm-hmm. But boy, I even saw the dock was a little misty and wet and all that. So. And can you relate to a multicolored car? I almost feel like I've got a a car with a, a fender off another car that's the wrong color. No, but I would say that we lived at a we lived in a house with a multicolored roof. <laughs> yeah, it, was, looked, it was it was looked like a car roof. to me with a with a turquoise fender on it. That's what that's what it looked like. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, we didn't. She didn't have any funky cars like that. How about grandfather? Because I really feel like I'm going up the ladder. I feel like it's a grandfather. May, I and I feel that like... I wouldn't know. I'd have to check with my aunt on that. 
All right. And there, I'm even being told it's on her side of the family. And kind of like a, almost like a farm feeling, like he lived on a farm type of place. Yeah, none of our but, family. But one of these I don't farm. care type of attitudes with the with the way the car looked and all of that. So Yeah, no, that that doesn't uh that doesn't uh that doesn't uh mean anything to me, car. but yeah, I have to listen, ask my aunt if they had I'll have to ask my aunt because she would know. I mean she's Yeah, the last one more thing, multi colored car Cameron could be is anyone now driving an odd colored car like Something you may not buy, but yet the colors are really strange. Uh, no, no, we wouldn't know that. You know, my brothers all, right. all drive normal, normal looking cars. I drive a normal looking car. Jaden does. Everybody, Jim does. Still getting this one's been patched together. That's what I'm hearing. Patched together. I'll leave it. Maybe later you may catch yeah. on, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not too big on forcing something. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. But right. I do know what, what what she's telling me about. Um let's see what else. Uh, schooling. I'm getting something about schooling with her, but I don't know what this is. Yeah, don't know anything about schooling. I want right. to be a writer. And she wrote what a book when her? she was in school. Trying to get get more. She's saying, you know, we're talking about her passing over. She wants to just let you know how good it is for her now, how happy she is. And I'm going to give you a little scene again. She seems to be working with me in scenes. Okay. You know when you go into a hotel and uh, like a, a larger hotel and they've got the, the you know a person at the uh, podium. You walk up and you tell them you know why you're there and all that. Not the check-in desk, but it's like a podium. She's showing me. Oh, it's, like the concierge. Concierge. I couldn't think of that name because <laughs> I'm trying to keep in touch with her too. I don't know what this is all about. I feel like I want to talk about. I don't know hotel checking in. Uh, Probably someone working at a hotel would Maybe work. Maybe she checked in on the other side. Yeah, I can get that, <laughs> but no, it, it really is. She didn't go. At, she didn't stay at hotels. Or, there was nothing about hotels or concierge. She was a glamper. She loved her drive. She loved riding in her in her little uh, uh, camper truck. You know. Oh, nice. Um, let me. Any any connection with her in Chicago? No. That's where I was hoping that. It, it was reminding me of a place I was at in Chicago. Yeah, no, she was in Canada the whole time. She didn't live in the States at okay. all. Okay. Oh. I'm trying to piece this together because I know what I'm seeing. I'm still getting this where you walk up to the podium and there she is, but I'm not getting that part of it. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, well, Shally usually puts those together when I don't, but. I'm, yeah, I'm not and coming with anything either, hun. It's like it's putting her in charge. Almost Did like you that? need her permission or you need, I, I don't get it, but I, I know what her, I'm, I'm sure she, she'd be happy about being in charge. And maybe all that is, and that, could she be talking about actually working over there? I know they do different little, whatever job you want, you, you can do it. Was she a greeter, maybe? Maybe she's greeting. Maybe she's at St. Peter's Gate greeting. Greeting? <laughs> I don't know where, but... <laughs> On the other side, you know, greeting people. The uh, heavenly version of a Walmart greeter. Yeah. Heavenly <laughs> version of a Walmart it, greeter. He, you know, that, that she's got a little be, name tag, like Barb Steele. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. Which, which... Welcome to yeah. heaven. <laughs> Barb Steele. See, there's a good porn name too, Barb Steele. Barb Steele, that was that was her name. Of your name or good porno names, Cam. Barbara Jean. It's a good good porn name. Is that what you said? Yeah. Barb Steele. I'm sure oh, she's yeah. like. It's the bonded version. Steele, every time people, I tell people your name, they go, "Is that his real name? That's a porn name." Well, listen, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you something. Speaking of that name, so I did a Google search on myself a long time ago. And 
I come up with a guy who used to race cars, okay? Then there's a female version that spells her name differently, and she's a porn star. And then there's a guy that's uh, an actor, and then there's me. <laughs> yeah, I see the race car driver. And I've I done have- I've done all those except the porn. <laughs> <laughs> He missed the good one. <laughs> and that's why you don't have an STD. That's right. And that's why I don't have an STD. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it could be that she would like to, she probably would like that, I think, you know, the idea that she be a greeter or some kind of person that, because in charge, because anytime we went over to her house, she was always, you know, Making sure the house smelled nice, and she had extra, she had all this food out for everybody. That you know, she always made something up. So you know, whenever I'd go over there, the first thing she'd do is make sure she had Winnipeg rye bread at the house. And, oh, wow! And I'd always you know eat the loaf. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> you're a growing boy. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole loaf of whole loaf of Winnipeg rye bread. It was just you can't you can't. There's no. There's no other bread in this world that tastes better than Winnipeg rye bread, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's yeah. probably replaced San Francisco sourdough because I'm sure that's got homeless stuff in it now. Yeah, and I think that what Devindia is saying is that I think that as much as she was as humble as she was, I think she would have liked a more glamorous life. Mm. Because she did enjoy, she did enjoy, I know that my mom, when I was growing up, she enjoyed, you know, having all the girls over and having fun and blah, 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 that kind of thing, you know. She's a social butterfly. She really is when she's in the right environment, yeah. Yeah. In the right environment, she's a very social butterfly. I mean, Divindia and her and, and Divindia's mom could talk everybody's year off he could just be in this conversation and time would fly by in no time because mom's always talking and between her and bev is you could never get a word in edgewise <laughs> <laughs> she was earlier and now i've got her backed off it's sometimes when things don't fit either i'm mismatching their frequency i don't know what it is it's a little bit harder to get them back on track and that's i'm struggling with her right now but well I'll that's take normal yet that's normal, Chuck, for her, you know? Is you, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. You could, yeah. She could go off on one track and then start another one, and then she'd go, oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I can hear her voice. Oh, did I? Oh, did I do that? Yeah, Mom, you did. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm losing the contact as I'm. The whole time you're talking, that's usually when I get a little bit more to add to it. Well, I think she's, I think the bottom line is we just want to know that she's fine, she's okay, and, you know, if she's got any messages, you know. I mean, you know, she left a letter for us, uh, for the boys, me and my brothers and, and, and stuff, of what she wanted, you know, and um, what she wanted, she and she in the letter, she says, oh, I got a small will, just enough to pay for the, pay for the, um, the yeah. um, the funeral, yeah, and I was like, oh, okay, well, that's neat, but we don't know what that looks like. We have no idea. We have, yeah, I mean, the I went up on Sunday for the last time to help my stepdad uh, fill out the paperwork, but they didn't tell us what it is. But we probably it's probably we're probably looking at around five thousand dollar life insurance, but that's gonna, you know, do whatever, whatever. Right. So it's gonna it'll be a year before we see anything that. Did she have anything to say about Janet? She brought her up. She brought her birthday up. Because her birthday was in June. So maybe there's something she wants to say to Janet, her sister. We kind of took all the uh, I'll just away. see if, if there's anything there. I'm, I know she's listening to what you're saying right now. So, um, In the squeaky chair. Would this make sense that Janet has had her whole world turned upside down. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, she lost her husband in in uh, in March, uh, just when this COVID started. But she didn't. He didn't die of COVID. And then now six, or actually in June, uh, she lost her husband. And then six months later, uh, uh, her sister died. Well, that's tough. That is hard. Yeah. 
I mean, she barely buried yep. her husband. And he was very worldly. Yeah. He was the porn star. <laughs> yeah, he was the porn star. Actually, I kept the, the, the ongoing joke in the family was he worked uh, in the, in, uh, for the, uh, he was a contractor for the military in Saudi Arabia and in communications. And the, the big, the big discussion every time I saw him was, come on, fill it and let's hear about the UFOs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he always, oh, he knows, you love it when people do that. He was, den- and he denied me till the very day he died. So I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, he, uh, Terry was very worldly, but Janet, yeah, her, her world's been turned upside down. She's, she's a mess. I'm not getting much on that now, other than I see your mom holding hands with with her and in, in, in a good way, making me feel like she's still very close to her, even though she's on the other side. Oh, they were very close. They talked every day, pretty much. Yeah, so I, but symbolically, they're still holding hands. There's, yeah. As far as your mom's concerned, they're still very close. Yeah. What and about, I want to say... Okay, go ahead. As, I'm sorry, it just came out of nowhere, but she's talking about the November birthday. That would be mine. That was me oh, the last time. Go. Good. That's the last time. That's the last time we as a family were together with her. Was my birthday oh, okay. in 2019. Well, I think no. I think she came down for Christmas. But yeah, my birthday's in November. What about? Does she have anything for Divindia? Let's just see. Um... Yeah. I, yeah, I got something here, but I don't know what it is. Sometimes when I explain what what like what, what your mom did, you'll understand what that movement is. This would be like trying to eat something, but then you reach in your mouth. You know when you have like um, you're eating fish and you get a fish bone in your mouth and you yeah. reach in and take the fish bone out. On that idea, your mother just did that as soon as as soon as you mentioned your wife's name, she pulled something out of her mouth, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> Like, it made me feel like now I can eat again. Huh. I don't know. I'll have to give that some thought, I suppose. Maybe she'll know what it is, but again, it's like taking something that you're trying to eat, but you can eat it, and you're taking it out of your mouth. Huh. It might be between the two of them, something that the two of them know yeah. about. Maybe. I'll have to. Maybe, yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? said, maybe she didn't like me, and I said, yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> there were two peas in a the pod, they were. Uh, what about Mike and Joe? Any messages for Mike and Joe, my brothers? Brothers? Let's see. <laughs> I got to give it straight. She did the best she could with both of them, but Mike is a total loss, or Mike is... Mike is still not developed. I don't know what this is. But... <laughs> yeah, well, we could say that. <laughs> okay, I don't know what the, where to go with that other than I, that. You know what? The, the, you you are just fine with that. <laughs> he, Mike, okay. Mike, listen, Mike is Mike is my is my youngest brother, and he is uh, he's the you know he he's he's the Funkle. He's Uncle okay. Funkle. Okay, <laughs> he's Funkle Mike. Okay. Uh, you know, he's, he's just a fun, loving, carefree, does what he wants kind of guy. And, and, uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's not, he's not a hopeless case. He's just, he's just Mike. (laughs) She just said she loves all of you, you know, and she wanted to make that clear. Yeah. They don't always talk about love even during every reading. You don't always get that. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but she's just saying her. Her family was her life. Yeah, well, she she loved she loved coming to visit us. She loved when we came to visit her, and and uh, you know, yeah. And, uh, so that's for Mike. What about Joe? You got anything for Joe? Let's see, Joe, Joe. Okay, uh, okay. He's got his head in the clouds. I guess he's always wanting more than what he has. Yeah, that would be Joe a little bit. Yeah. Probably more than what he what he can afford or whatever. And this is, you know, from her viewpoint. Yeah. 
Um, could, be. could be. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure on that one. But, you know, when you said she did the best she could, it's interesting because both boys had to go live with my dad for a while because they both got in trouble with uh, mm-hmm. with uh, with their actions as teenagers. So they went to live with my dad for a while because mom was having a hard time with him. That's expected, though, when you... <laughs> Yeah, when you're a teenager, things are gonna happen. Well, you know, she was a single mom too, so. Yeah. Oh, I know. Come on, who wouldn't take advantage? Right, it's a tough job. Yeah, it is. But uh, yeah. Well, Chuck, I mean, thank you so much. I mean, we pretty much took the whole hour up, V. I'm sorry. Yeah, I struggled oh. a little there, but you know, oh, what we but got I to- also attribute that. Typically, you want to wait three or four months. You know, where it's only been. Under a month, it's yeah. uh, three weeks. It's been three weeks, so maybe we'll check in a few months from now and see what it looks like. Sure, that there were times when she was just talking away, wouldn't stop, and I'm saying, "Hold on, I'm trying to write it down." So yeah, that's mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's it's good to know that she's enjoying her life upgrade. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good thing. I mean, you know, I I mean the the past. Six months before she died, she was having a hard time. And so, um, and then, um, you know, when I grabbed her, I just can't, re- I just can't get out of my head the whole grabbing her face, taking my mask off, grabbing her face and kissing her on the forehead, telling her I love, I love her and saying, you won't see me again. And then she said, can I go to sleep now? I, I'll never forget that. And I'm so lucky to have had that experience with her where my brothers didn't get that. They got the, we have to look after mom. We have got to take her back and forth to the hospital. And, and uh, they had it rough with her uh, because they were the ones that were looking out for her, you know. <clears throat> that is special. So I think that I got the, I think I feel pretty lucky. But I also feel kind of, you know, a little bit guilty because I told her she was going home and then only to find out she's not, you know. So it's kind of. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm <clears throat> sure she sounds like she converted it to. She's going to the real home. Yeah, I think so too. I think she, I think she managed to make that make that different. And Divindi offered some good insight to it as well. So I feel, I feel a bit better now. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> and uh, Chuck, we've just got a few more minutes left. So if somebody's listening to this, you just said something that I, I thought was very helpful. That usually it's it it's best if you talk to them like. Uh, anywhere between two and four months after they cross over? Is there anything else that a first-time person making an appointment would be useful for them to know? Well, to be honest, the wait period is usually for the person to get over the passing so that the person getting the reading isn't too... Emotionally. Yeah, too emotionally involved that they they can't even answer. Um, My favorite story with that was one lady I... It was her mom coming through, and I said, she's giving me this date, and it was actually the month and the date. I said, is that someone's birthday or whatever? And she goes, no. And, you know, we went on with the reading. And then a couple of days later, she said, remember mom gave a birth date? You know, we'll just say January 3rd She, she in the email, and she said, uh, that was my birthday. Could mom have been talking about my birthday? <laughs> Oh, well, the, here's the funniest part of the story, though. I, uh, a few months later, or a year later, whatever, I'm doing a group over in Orlando, Florida, and a, a lady kind of messed up in this on the same way. She forgot something pretty important that she should have known, but because she was in front of the group and you know, kind of surprised by the question, she answered it. And then I told that story. I said, you know, once there was a lady, and I, I told them about the email, and it was her birthday and all that. And when you know she's in the corner of the room, she raised her hand and said, Chuck, that was me. <laughs> so oh! it, was, it was the same lady. And she said, and, you know, now she went to that event in Orlando, even though I had her as a phone reading. But the, the, the funny part is I started laughing and I said, you know, it's bad enough you didn't recognize your own birthday, which I would recognize mine if it's a movie I'm watching or a TV ad. As soon as I hear my birth date, it's like I associated it immediately. I said, it was kind of funny that you did that. I said, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is you did that. Now you're admitting that you didn't recognize your own birthday in front of everyone in the room when you really didn't have to do that. I said, that's, <laughs> that's where I'm having a problem. So, 
Some people are well, just terminally honest. God bless. It was fine. It was fine. And in fact, later we went out and had dinner together. So oh, nice, nice. nice. And and it's funny the stuff that happens with it with the readings. You uh, every time I do one, it's it's always beautiful stuff that happens. Yes, love and wisdom are definitely yeah. never disappointing. Yeah. And no, Chuck, a, you, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, can you believe it? We've made it to the end again of another live show. That was and, very fast. And fortunately, Chuck has agreed to come back more times in 2021. So if you're listening to this on the download and you're thinking, hey, I want to talk to Chuck. You know what? You can. He'll be back with us next month. Uh, next week, we have Curtis Childs with us from the Swedenborg Foundation. Oh, great. And we'll be looking at what's going on right now from a spiritual point of view. So don't miss that show. And as always, Chuck, you are the best. Thank you for coming on. I want to encourage people, please go to his website. Check it out. ChuckBergman.com. C-H-U-C-K-B-E-R-G-M-A-N.com. Until we do it again next week. Rock on, babies. You've been listening to You Are What You Love with author Waishali. To order Waishali's book, You Are What You Love, or to schedule a private self-emergent session with Waishali, visit youarewhatyoulove.com. Thanks for joining us, and remember, you are what you love, and you love whatever you give your attention to. So love wisely.